Hello, joining me today for my coffee and career chat is the wonderful Emily Shaw. Emily, thank you so much for, for coming on and having a chat with me today. Um, Emily runs a, a business, she's founder of Pineapple People, which is a company that um, that's right, helps leaders talk um, about gender and race. So super excited to have her on um, and hear her story. Thank you for coming. Thank you for having me. You are so welcome. Um, so let's let's jump straight in and hand talk um, about what you wanted to be when you were younger. When I was younger, I actually wanted to be a stunt driver. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> I just love the idea of kind of crashing cars and not getting in trouble for it. I thought that seemed like a really, really, really fun job. <laughs> I think I think that's probably a little part of you that still wants to be a stunt driver. <laughs> Yeah, if somebody gave me the opportunity now, I'd be, I'd be there, I'd be ready. Amazing, <laughs> that's brilliant. Well, I mean, obviously you didn't become a stunt driver as much as uh, <laughs> you know wanted to be. So, um, yeah, tell us a little bit about what you did do with your career and where you, the journey that's got you to where you are today. So, um, I graduated from university and I had no idea what I wanted to do. There was some people, apart from the stunt driver thing, but that didn't really pan out. <laughs> And, you know, there are some people that absolutely know what they want to do and that's brilliant and they're ready to go. I had no idea. I mean, when I think back to like 18 year old me now, I probably wouldn't get her to make any decisions at all on my behalf. So, you know, surprising that she didn't really know um, what was going on. So uh, I left university and just did a whole different bunch of jobs. I worked for the Queen's Corsetier in a lingerie company. I worked in retail, I worked in the charity sector, I worked in technology, I worked in financial services. Wow. And um, it drove both my poor mum and um, recruiters mad because I'd moved around so much that the kind of the generation before me, you had a job for life. You went and you were a teacher or a doctor or an architect or a lawyer and that was your job for life. Um, and then obviously with the next generation that kind of started to not really be realistic anymore mm -hmm. so my CV ended up just kind of being everywhere and I did have to there was a point early on in my career where lots of recruiters would say to me oh well you need to justify you know why you've moved around so much which I found really odd because what I had was instead of five years experience in one job I would have five sets of one year's experience in five jobs and surely that would make me a more kind of well-rounded employee than just someone who's done the same job for five years. Thankfully that's changed now and you know they, I don't get asked that anymore but um, it was definitely something that at the start of my career people found kind of difficult to understand mm. and the way that I look back at it now which is actually a really useful way to look at things is we talk about we're told that we have to have a career path which means you do this and then this and then this. And like, you know, the idea is the trajectory goes in a specific way. And if you don't know, then you're just kind of wasting time. But what I found actually was instead of my career being like a path, all the jobs I'd done ended up being this amazing, eclectic collection of experiences. And that meant that the older I got, the more senior I got through my career, I had all these experiences to pull on, like, good ones and bad ones, like even the horrible experiences, you know, I have been fired before in the past. <laughs> All those awful experiences still kind of just added to this huge pool of, of experience. And now I'm in a place in my life where I can really look back at that experience and say, right, what, what bits of those do I want to bring forward with me for the rest of my working career? And what bits am I not that interested in? Mm. And if you've only worked one job the whole way through, you're not necessarily going to know that. Mm. It's really, really interesting because we've given the message in these, these videos quite a lot that it's absolutely okay to not know what you're doing and it's okay to change. And actually, this is almost the other way of looking at it is that it's, it's a good thing in that there's some real benefit to having tried a load of different things and done and had like a, a real wide range of experience. Like you said, it makes you a more well-rounded person and clarifies for you what, what it is that you like and what you don't like and what you want to do and what you don't. So I think that's a really nice way of looking at it. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it, uh a very prominent CEO in Silicon Valley said to me once um, that the trick to being a good CEO is to know a little bit about a lot of things. <laughs> that makes a lot of sense. <laughs> I was like, I'm there with you. I know not very much about lots of things. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> so, I mean, what, tell us about, because obviously all of that has got you to the point where 
you're now doing your own thing. Tell us a little bit about that, um, that this new adventure that, you, that you're on essentially now. So um, I ended up mostly doing project management work in financial services. And as I kind of moved through financial services, it's quite an old fashioned industry. And I found that it didn't quite kind of match with the way that the world was moving forward. Um, you know, we care so much more now about the morality of business, businesses and the ethics of businesses and the, their awareness of the intersectionality of people rather than just, um, you know, a, say, the same kind of person doing the same kind of jobs. Um, and financial services kind of tended to be a bit behind that and not because, not on purpose, not because they're, they didn't understand the future. It was more that the environments weren't in the right place so that people could have conversations about how to move these things forward. Mm. You know, for example, it's, it's not kind of a revelation to say that there aren't as many uh, women on boards in things like financial services. And it's not necessarily that um, financial services has more kind of a, more, a, a worse attitude about it. It's more that the, the environment isn't there to be able to say, right, why aren't these, why don't we have women on these boards? Let's look at it and let's understand it rather than just kind of hiring a token woman and going, there you go. <laughs> um, so there was definitely something there because people wanted to change. People really wanted to change, but financial services was just steeped in this old fashioned way of doing things. And because I'd spent so long there, I kind of I understood the old fashioned way of doing things and I could see the gap with a new way of doing things. Mm -hmm. Um, so I kind of thought, right, I've got this whole pool of experience from all of my millions of jobs. Let's use that, take what I know, trust my gut and move towards a place where I help people to make the world a better place. Because I'm very, um, it's very important to me that I don't kind of blame and shame businesses for not being where they should be, because that's never going to get us where we need to be. It's more about pulling together, understanding, being able to have those difficult conversations and be able to move forward to a place where we have businesses that are far more representative of the communities in which they operate. Amazing. I love that though. I love the fact that you saw that something wasn't, you know, wasn't quite right in your, in your, in your mind, you, you're sort of saying actually that, that this could be done better and you haven't just left that industry to start again. You've essentially, you've gone right, well, what can I do to help and change that? And, and I guess that's quite a brave step to, to kind of, to go and say, I'm going to do my own thing. I mean, that in itself is brave, but then to actually, you know, take on something that's quite a big, big challenge that, um, but appreciating the fact that people want help and want to change and, and that you can meet that need. So, I mean, congratulations. That's an awesome achievement. <laughs> and what do you, what do you love about it? It's not the same as I thought it was going to be a year ago. The, the business itself has developed and, you know, it's been great because I've just kept myself open to things. When you run your own business, you can just keep yourself completely open to things and you think you're going to go down this way of doing things. But then actually another opportunity pops up and you go, oh, maybe I'll just kind of go this way instead um, so that's been that's been really interesting mm -hmm. uh, I still feel like I'm having these cumulative experiences even though I don't work for anyone else anymore mm. um, and it just it means that I can steer the trajectory of my business towards things that I care about and that just makes such a difference like the the thought of being able to help people have conversations about race and have conversations about gender when the disadvantages of minority groups are kind of so often visible, but people don't know what to do about them. It's just, it really matters. You know, like I get one life, I have all these skills that I built up. Let's, let's use this life to make, make the world a better place. Right. Amazing. Yeah, no, that's great. That's, and it's, uh, it's, it's great the way that you've talked about the, your experiences and how if all of that that journey of, of having done, not a career path, like you said, but a collection of experiences has got you to the point where you feel that you can you can do this and now you can choose something that actually is in line with your values and that you really care about. And I think, you know, I've learned from personal experience that that can completely transform your day to day and your job if you actually really believe in what you're doing. Is there anything, like if you could just talk to your 16 year old Emily and say anything, you know, in terms of, um, advice or tips or anything that you wish that you knew then that you know now is there anything else you'd want to add in at this point I think one of the things that I would definitely say to my kind of 16 17 18 year old self is trust your gut mm. because I have come absolutely full circle I had 
you know, I always loved talking to people and helping with that kind of personal point of view. I was never really a systems and processes person. And then I went through my whole career kind of being edged towards these systems and processes as, as a project manager. And it was always the people side that I excelled with. It was always that people wanted to work with me because they knew I was a safe pair of hands mm. um, rather than because I had any specific technical knowledge about insurance transaction accounting, which I did. <laughs> but people, they wanted to work with me. Um, and it's almost like I've gone completely full circle now. And I've realized that what I need to spend my life doing is still talking to these people connecting with people and being interested in people and listening to them and hearing what they have to say and, you know, being able to shape the working lives of people in a more positive way. And I kind of almost think that I knew that at the start. <laughs> I kind of still went through all of the stages of doing these kind of corporate jobs and, you know, working in Canary Wharf and doing all those things that you think you should do. Yeah. And actually I've ended up right back where I started, which was believing that, People do want to be better. They just need some help getting there. Love it. Trust your gut. Even, even when you're 16, 18, you, you know who you are and you know what you love to do. So that's, that's an awesome message. Thank you. And the great thing is that even if you get it wrong and you go into the wrong thing, like you said, you, there's no real, it's a win-win because you, you, are, you learn from that anyway and then you'll end up on the right path. But with another experience under your belt as well. So I think there's a, there's a real theme on just not worrying, isn't there? And just doing what you think is right. And you, there's no real way to lose in that sense. So yeah. It's impossible to take a wrong step when it's not a path. Exactly. If it's a path, then you worry about, is this the right step? But if you just think of it as a collection of experiences, then there's no way that you can do the wrong thing. Oh, I love that. That's a really amazing message. Thank you, Emily. Well, you've been a star. Let's just quickly wrap up. Um, where would someone go if they wanted to find out a little bit more about, I guess, starting a business? It's probably uh, the best, best thing to go for. What would you advise in that sense? So uh, nowadays, it's much, much easier to start your own business than it was, you know, when I started working 20 years ago. It's, there's so many places out there that you can go that want to help and support small businesses. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the world is moving away from these huge evil corporates when we're moving, mm -hmm. thankfully, back towards kind of smaller businesses and more niche startups and things like that. And there's loads of places out there that really want to help with that. Um, there's one kind of, it's almost like a network called uh, Enterprise Nation. Mm -hmm. If you Google them and you can buy a book that tells you everything that you need to do to be able to start your own business. They have kind of seminars. They have loads of information there. You can connect with people. You can register and sign up for things. And it's just a really nice place to start to understand all the kind of bits and pieces that you need to make a business and not have to worry about the kind of things like the finance side of it and things mm -hmm. like that. Loads of support there because there's loads of people in the same boat. So there's lots out there that can really, really help. Amazing. No, that's, that's brilliant. Thank you. Well, this has been great, Emily. Thank you so much for taking us through your story. A uh, really interesting story with some great um, words of wisdom in there as well. So hugely appreciated. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you, Josie. No worries. Bye. Bye now.